Well, talking about prophecy, let's turn to Revelation chapter 13. John said, I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a great beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So, as we read this description of this beast out of the sea, the sea representing the nations, uh, we come to the realization that we are talking here about a coming world leader that has many names. Uh, the son of perdition, uh, but the name by which he is most generally known and yet probably the least used in the Bible is the Antichrist because he is opposed uh, to our Lord Jesus Christ. In the 17th chapter of Revelation, as we talk about the seven heads, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Uh, so it sounds like uh, what we're having described here, seven heads, and ten horns. But there the angel said to me, Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the Roman, or upon which the woman sits. The seven hills of Rome. Uh, this final world governing kingdom will uh, com be comprised of nations that made up the Roman Empire. And thus it has a real uh, distinction uh, of being uh, the Roman Empire uh, revived in these last days. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 7, after this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, there was the fourth beast, that's the Roman Empire, dreadful and terrible, and exceedingly strong. And it had iron teeth, as it uh, compares with the iron legs of the uh, dream of Nebuchadnezzar, which was again the Roman Empire. And it devoured and broke in pieces and stumped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all of the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. So I considered the horns, Daniel said, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. This would be the Antichrist, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, but a mouth speaking great things. And I beheld because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even until the beast was slain, his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Down in verse 19 of Daniel 7, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all of the others, the exceeding dreadful whose teeth were iron, his nails of brass which devoured and broke in pieces and stomped, the residue, or stamped the residue with his feet. And I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Then he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. Will be, which will be diverse from all other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, shall tread it down and break it in pieces. The ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings which will arise, and that's in these last days, the revival of the Roman Empire. Another shall arise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings. 
and he shall speak great words against the Most High. And uh, the idea of he will be a blasphemous man. He will speak against God and blaspheme the God of heaven. As we uh, read here in uh, his name, he has the name of blasphemy. And uh, one of the, and the, of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. And the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, another shall arise after them, and he will be diverse from the first, and he will subdue three kings. So uh, the Antichrist arising out of this uh, ten nation federation that will uh, have world power, and so is described for us in several places in the Bible, uh, here in Revelation and especially in Daniel. And the beast, the Antichrist, which I saw was like a leopard. And of course, we know that the leopard was the Grecian kingdom in Daniel. And his feet uh, were as the feet of a bear, which was the Medo-Persian empire in uh, the book of Daniel. And his mouth, the mouth of a lion, uh, which of course was the Babylonian empire. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. So this man that will arise to lead the world in the last days, he will have characteristics that uh, were uh, seen in the other governing empires of the world, going back to the Babylonian and the Medo-Persian and the Grecian. And uh, he is related to the Roman Empire, uh, but he uh, has really, as it says here, uh, the dragon gives him his power, his throne, and great authority. As we pointed out this morning, Satan is in control of the world today. Twice the New Testament calls him the God of this world. Jesus called him the Prince of this world. He said, the Prince of this world is coming, but he hath nothing in me. When Jesus came to the earth, the purpose of his coming into the earth was to redeem the world back to God. Originally, it belonged to God. He created it. God created man and placed him on the earth and gave the earth to man, have dominion over the earth, over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, and every living and moving thing. When Satan came into the garden and tempted Eve to eat of the fruit, and she gave to Adam, and he ate of the fruit, the dominion of the earth was turned from man over to Satan. And Satan at that point became the God of this world. Now when Jesus came, as I said, he came to redeem the world back to God in order that the world might once again belong to God. And he died, paid the death, of the price of redemption for the world. And as the book of Hebrews tells us that we do not yet see the world under his control, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than man or the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. The purpose of the coming again of Jesus is to establish the kingdom of God here on the earth, that which he purchased, and he's going to take possession of that which he purchased 
through his death on Calvary.